Hello, Brian here with Embrilliance. Staring at a blank page for a writer is just as daunting as a blank page for an embroiderer. If you want to create a font, you'll probably want to start with something that's in the true type family. We don't especially love digitizing true type lettering, but this is certainly a way for you to cut your teeth in the font creation process. What we have for you in Stitch Artist 3 is the Create menu, Publish, Create Font Page. This opens up the font selection window for your OS, whether it's Windows or Mac, and you can pick a font. Here I'll grab something like Harvest Italic. Doesn't matter. You can choose the different styles and then click OK. And now the magic happens. What Stitch Artist does for you is it creates a new design page with a good set of the glyphs, not everything, not every bit of punctuation, but certainly most things that people will want to type for embroidery. And each glyph has its own design. So here we have the uppercase A. I'm going to zoom in on that. And you'll see there's background art, which is just a bitmap image. And there is the outline, which is already set to break up or to use as an outline if you want this as an outline font. And your baseline is all set for you. So all that's left for you to do is, well, everything else. That is to say, digitize all of the individual satin strokes within these designs. There are two ways to break down a letter like this so that we can stitch it out. Generally speaking, we're going to do this as a set of satin stitches. And let's take a look at how we're going to do it. First thing is we're going to select the reference art because that will let us begin to digitize objects right after that reference art. So if I'm going to digitize this in the normal fashion with something like an alternating input, I can just sort of click along. In fact, I think I'm going to do this part first, a little crossbar here. And then we'll just touch the C key and keep on going. I think I'm going to put a cap on this object. So let me just get something working there. Touch the C key again. C key just lets me repeat my column input the way I was doing it with the last time I entered it. There we go. One more time. We'll put something in here. A little bit overlap, never hurt anyone. Come down here. And now we have a digitized A. Now, obviously, there's ways we would go back and edit that, but that's basically the process. And you'll see in our object tree, we have our reference art followed by the pieces as we made them. Now, we do have this outline here. And if we were going to use the outline, which I don't really recommend, but we, we can use that as basic art. So what I'm going to do is take these lovely pieces that I just made and delete them. And we'll come back in here onto the artwork. And let's do some breaking up. We're going to take a look at first the hole. This A has a hole like most do. And the first thing you'll want to do when you have that is go ahead and connect to the hole. What that does is gives you this line. And we want to separate off next this horizontal bar. So let's go ahead and select that again. Select those pieces. And we will do a break across. So now we have our design in two pieces, the outline and the bar. Since I want this to sew first, I'm going to drag it up and let that sew first. And now let's take a look at this and break it. Since I know I'm going to do a capped object here, I'm just going to add a point and do a break across. And then I'll come over to this side and add a point, and we'll break across again. And so now we have our center object, our left leg, our cap, and our right leg. And what we can do with those is 
go ahead and add inclination lines. So on this, I'll want something like that. And on the left leg, we'll keep it simple. I'll just say I want something close to horizontal. On the cap, I definitely want something close to horizontal. And just a reminder, you can hold your Alt key down as you set an inclination to get pure horizontal or vertical strokes. And then this one, hit the I key, drag across, use my Alt, OK. And now I can select them all and tell them to become satin stitches. So that's another way to do it. But of course, with this, everything is a precise meet. So when we look at these stitches on this angle, compared with the stitches on the object that's going to meet them, this is sort of like parting the hair. Okay, This is just going to comb it apart, and you might have small registration issues there. So at this point, I'll suggest, and here I'll hold the Alt key so I snap in place, that you actually do stretch these out a little bit, just so that when these lines come across, let me turn the uh, 3D off, when these strokes come across, they're not grabbing all along one particular satin stroke, because if they do, they tend to pull it apart. So there we have it. Turn the 3D back on. And you've got two different ways to fill in the strokes for your letters. And of course, what's next? <laughs> well, the B, the C, the D, and so on. Have fun.